Hello and welcome to the Science Break for GCSE Science. Today we're looking at classification and the three domain classification system. Let's start off by looking at, the, at an example. This is a bird, a particular kind of bird this is. It's called a budgerigard, sometimes called a budgie or a parakeet. But we know it's a bird because of two key features. It has feathers and it lays eggs. These are common features of birds. However, it does have other features as well. Features that are specific to this species might be something to do with the beak shape or the wing length, the wing span and other features as well. We can also look at the structure and arrangement of internal organs. Internal organs. We can also look at other things like courtship behavior. This is how these birds would attract mates. This is specific to the species as well. So these kind of features and description of these features helps us to classify, classify this species of bird. And by classify, we mean place into a group, place into a specific group. We could take a look at another type of bird. This is also a bird. This is a penguin. And the features that it will have in common with the budgerigar is that it has feathers and penguins lay eggs as well. But other features are going to be different. So the common features are feathers and laying eggs, but there are other features that the penguin has that are different. And they are quite obvious when we look at them. However, we can look at details as we have above and we can see relationships. We can see relationships between different types of bird. This helps us to understand the evolution of birds. This helps us to understand the evolution of birds. However, there are more living things on the planet than just birds, of course. And over time, scientists have managed to classify many living things into different groups. Here are examples of lots more living things. Obviously nowhere near the amount that actually exists, but some examples. And we can actually group them into different groups. So we can move them around a bit. And in fact, we have five different groups. We have animals, we have plants, a couple of examples of fungi, just one example of a prokaryote, and a few examples of something called protists. There are, of course, many, many more living things and many more that go into these groups. However, this system has a name. This system of grouping has a name. It's called the Five Kingdom Classification System. Now, the slight problem with this is that it's a very old system. In fact, it's hundreds of years old. It has helped us to group living things, but it's quite an old system. What we have now is a better understanding and analysis of genes and DNA. And we call this genetic analysis. And this has helped us understand living things and relationships better. For example, here are two single-celled organisms. The one on the left has no nucleus and contains no unused sections of DNA. And the one on the right contains some unused sections of DNA. And this is more like animals and plants than the other type of bacteria. So genetic analysis has helped us to understand this. So this has led to what we call a three domain classification system, a three domain system. One domain is called the archaea. These are primitive bacteria usually found in extreme environments. Then we have bacteria. These are sometimes referred to as true bacteria. And then we have the eukaryotes or eukaryota. And this is pretty much everything else, animals, plants, fungi, and protists. So genetic analysis shows relationships between these and within these groups a bit better than the old system. So these are the three groups or the three domains in the three domain classification system. So this is all quite important information. We can then just summarize all of that by showing it on the screen as so. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.